guys, how are we doing today? Uh, doing, I think, well, should, should be a, maybe not quick, but a relatively simple project for the most part. Uh, it might get a little complicated at the end. Um, I'm going to make a fro. Um, I've made small fro's before in the Japanese fro style, which is just basically a, a straight blade, almost a knife. Uh, and out of railroad spikes, for, for, um, I sell them to split kindling for, for home use, basically. This fro I'm, I'm going to make also for, for somebody to split kindling, but they're dealing with, with larger pieces of firewood. So uh, I, I think a, 12, a 10 to 12 inch blade is, is good for them. If you don't know what a fro is, a fro is an, uh, a tool that uh, typically, I'd say a 16 inch blade, 14, 16 inches with a vertical uh, wooden handle and you baton that through a slab or a block of what would look like firewood when you start and you use it to split off uh, shake shingles for uh, the old shake shingle roof side and that kind of thing. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, we're making a fro to just split some pieces of wood with, uh, with a baton rather than uh, an axe or, or something like that where they might hit their floor and things. So we're going to use one of the, uh, this, what do you call it, a spring harrow, I call it a drag tine, whatever it's called. Well, you've seen me use these before, I've used them for swords. Decent steel, I think a good width for what I'm looking for on the, on the spine. And uh, I, think, I think a lawnmower blade might actually work well for this too. So uh, It doesn't have to be great steel, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a splitting maul, you know, it's not an axe, it has to be razor sharp. Um, something that's just durable though, it needs to be uh, something that you can you can hammer on and not have it break. Um, we'll start with this. I'll nip off the uh, the uh, the front blade here, and we'll get started. First thing we're gonna do is just take a little time and get this thing straightened out. Get some of that old rusty stuff off of there too, just to get the thing straightened out. Simple, simple. Last part of this thing straightened out. And we'll start to make a plan here. So I don't need, I certainly don't need all this uh, material, that's for sure. Like I said, I was looking, I think a 12, no more than 12 inch blade on it. Maybe we'll use most of it. 10 inches probably fine. Let's just go for 12 and then we'll deal with it from there. So somewhere there is where I'd like to get the blade formed. And then from here I want to make an eye as a handle. Now typically, the, if this was a fro, typically the, the handle would be vertical and then you would baton this down through like this. And I mean that's the traditional way of doing it. In my mind I was thinking of maybe making the handle perpendicular to the blade. So the blade is here, the handle's towards you, and then you hammer that down through. I think you're less likely to, to hit your hand with that. Uh, and then it would give you a nice bending leverage to split that piece of kindling off. But then I'm thinking about it, if for some reason the, the blade gets jammed into the firewood, it might be more difficult to, uh, to, to get that out than if it was sitting on top where you could rock it out. So I'm not exactly sure. i got to make up my mind. I think it would be a cool exercise to see this, this handle perpendicular to the blade. Uh, either way, we're gonna we're gonna do something to create that eye, and I might just forge weld that right back together. Because I haven't done a wrap forge weld like that, like you would on, on an axe uh, or other tools like that. So let me think about this a second, um, and we'll see which way I go. Whether it's gonna be perpendicular or just a, just a rolled eye. Rolled eye would be easier. Let me think. What I do is do that the perpendicular eye. I I think just just for the sake of exercise. Because what that's going to require me to do is to take this from this point here and I, I could just twist it and then put the eye on, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to put that twist in there. It's, that's, that's the easy way out. It's not the Chandler way out. And we're, we're trying to learn as much as we can as we do these. So what I'm going to, have all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this steel in, alright? I'm going to squish it down and then draw it out in the opposite direction so that this width is going to be out. I think just to see if I can do that, I'm pretty sure I can. And um, that'll be a good exercise in hammering. You'll see Chandler do a lot of hammering on that. And that way you're going to get that, that perpendicular handle. I think, I think without a huge amount of, uh, without a twist, that's for sure, and a huge amount of, of, of a stress point, I hope. We're gonna find out, that's the, that's the, that's the plan. We're talking a lot today, wonder why.
a bit of a handle on this for a couple reasons. Uh, I can't quench it if I wanted to because my quench tank is frozen solid. It's pretty cold. This, this it's cold. It's been cold for a week now. Uh, also, if you if you watched my very first sword, I did quench some of this type of steel, and it wasn't you know it had partially cooled and it, it made it so brittle that it cracked when I hammered on the hot spot. So anyway, now we got a handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to do a, a, a sharp step because I don't want I don't want a real like I said I don't want a sharp step. All right, that'll create a weak point in it. So a bit of a taper. I can't let it roll, and I'm just trying to bring this down, hopefully without stretching it because I want I don't want to lose that mass. I think this is a silly idea, but it's, it's an exercise. Exercise and can you do it, I guess, is what we're doing. So we we'll keep going. Farther with it until we get an idea of what's, what's going on here. Silly Chandler, what are you trying to do? But we're gonna find out. It's moving. And how much do I need? I probably should grab. I'm gonna grab a little more off the end here. Let's grab a little bit more just to give me more room to play. Not sure how much I'm gonna need till I'm done. I guess. I think we're going to just try to take it down to a square. Hope that we're not losing too much in length. Let's take it down a little bit more. piece of rice broke my handle up. It's cooled down enough. It scared me. I didn't put a heavy weld on it. Almost, almost cold enough to hold on to. I think this is one silly thing I'm trying to do. Let's go a bit, a bit farther. this back part look like we weren't totally a monkey with a hammer. Just, I'm not going to spend a lot of time grinding this to make it look pretty, you know what I mean? I knew how much steel I need. I'm probably going to do a, uh, you know, nothing more than a two inch uh, 
handle on it, so two times six is six inches or so, because I'm ready to nip this off. Let's go ahead and nip it off. Let's do it. I think we'll have enough. Like I said, this isn't a swinging tool. The handle's there. It can be used as to pry, you know, and help split, but um, it, yeah, it doesn't need to be that robust. Let's nip this sucker off. Let's see, it'll give me a little bit more meat to play with right now. little dent in my cutoff. I'm probably safe. Well, I'm lucky I didn't mark up my damn hammer in the process. Put a twist in it, been done. We're at Let's go a little, a little farther. One more time. All right. I think that's good enough. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to start to stretch it in width. I hope. It would be awesome if I could get the same width. Opposite direction. Oh, missed. I was waiting for that to happen. I was just thinking to myself, it's not bad, Chandler. You haven't missed yet. That's a pretty narrow target. Spoke too soon. Alright, we'll keep stretching. One of the problems when I do projects like this, I try silly things. In the process, I might find myself just ruining the project. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not worrying about time too much here, but uh, I don't want to ruin it because I'm worried about this bird mouth thing that's going on, fish mouth thing that's going on here. And that might just prove. It's a dumb idea, Chandler. Maybe I gotta break it down more. I just don't want it to grow in length. I want, I want some strength there. Right, I went to the four pounder. It's got a little less aggressive peen. So as I'm bringing it down, I'm hoping it'll also spread without a whole lot of fish mounting going on. I would like to see this thing grow with again very soon. Very soon I would like to see that. Keep going. I mean, she's getting a little wider. The question is, is she, is she going to get wide enough before she gets too thin? Like I said, make sure you understand. We could have just did a vertical handle. All we would have had to do is we had that piece looking downward at it straight. Just had to take the end, roll it over, forge weld it into an eye, put a handle, and we would have been done. I wanted the blade looking down at it straight. I wanted the handle to come off like this. So all I really need to do is take my blade, looking at it sideways, put a twist in here to roll the stuff vertical, and then just roll that into a handle. Like, I mean, I could have put the twist in, but right, I'm gonna stop excuse making excuses. We're doing it this way today. A little more width here, if we can do it. shall be happy.
and anywhere is between, I'd say a quarter or an eighth and a quarter in thickness, I'll be happy. So we got going on here. Four pound now wakes you up a little. But as you can see, we got our blade this way and our handle that way. That's what we were after without actually doing a twist. I'm not totally disappointed in it. But we got, again, I'd like to do an inch for probably five days right now. Just a little bit more width out of this thing. I'm back to the three pound hander hammer. Let's me work across the blade a little bit more. Or, yeah, as you call it a blade. Let's just get a bit more of a rounded nose in that four pounder. So it should help stretch a little more. Plus it's lighter. So we're oh, probably less than a quarter, but uh, not quite 20. Let's try a stretch one more time. I think I'll call it happy. I really wish I could get more width than I'm gonna on this. But we tried. pounder to help stretch it. I don't want to stretch in both directions, but I think I think we'll, it'll help me get some width here. Of course, if I use the rounding side, it might help a little better. Great. I gotta find me and make I'm gonna make me a three pounder though. That's perfect for finishing fine blades and things. But I was swinging her hard. I guess it's a testament to how well it stands up anyway. Boom. Let's see about just cleaning her up, cleaning up her edges a little bit, getting some of those hammer marks out. So it don't look like a monkey with a hammer made it.
So again, what I do down into the black heat, just light taps, just kind of erasing some of those hammer marks. With smaller ones anyway. Sounds like it's cooled right down on us. Alrighty, and there we go. So now we have, uh, I bet you it's, yeah, make Jenna happy if it was over an inch. But it is just, just, oh, it's a little over an inch back here. So I, I'm okay with that. I was hoping to get back to this this length, but I think that'll hold the ham, handle just fine. And now I gotta decide whether I wanna put the bevel on this piece before I forge weld that eye or not. This will give me extra handle to put the bevel on. Let me let this thing cool. Matter of fact, I'm gonna normalize this thing because it went through a heck of a lot of abuse. So we'll run through a, a quick normalization process. And then we'll let it cool, we'll turn it around, and we'll start putting the bevel in on the blade. Don't need much of one, it's a splitting item. Uh, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, a, a pretty fine edge at the very bottom just to get things going. But then we want that kindling to pop off, or, you know, pop off. We don't want it to shave, we want it to pop off. Uh, well, actually, shaving wouldn't be too bad either if you really want to smell stuff. Well, we'll figure it out. What I'm going to do is go ahead and nip this off. Where's my mark? Right there. It's a little longer than I want it to be. I'm nipping it off at about 10 and a half, hoping for around 11. Hoping for around 11. Just judging what. I'm getting that freaking crack, you goof. Judging from experience. Guessing on weight and balance. Of course, let's get too cold. Sorry. Right. I kind of want a relatively clean cut there anyway. Do it right this time. Right, easy, Jen. You crazy? You so crazy? You man, it's crazy. Mark that side. Mark this side. Try to line those two up, try to get a decent cut on it before it gets too cold. Jesus, Shannon. You call yourself more free than you need to be doing here. I'll be damned. If I didn't want to go this way, I don't want to bugger it up too much. Damn, I sure not seen the struggle with the hell, children. You saw me dip that other one off, one heat, we just get done. <laughs> That's funny. One of these days I'm gonna make a cutoff with a with a chisel grind on it. For times like these when I'm really trying to get a decently clean cut. So it doesn't bevel, you know what I mean? So, but it must be close now. We must be close now. There she goes. Everybody's safe. We were hoping for clean. We didn't get it. All right, so here we go. This is thickness. I think is good enough for me. All I'm going to do is put a bevel down here. Uh, I don't want to draw it out too much in width. Just a very quick bevel uh, down to down to just about what I want. Uh, I don't want to do a lot of grinding on it. Just a simple bevel here. cutting edge there and uh, and then a good wedge in the, in the process. It shouldn't take a whole hell of a lot to do that. Get my bananas out. 
and we'll come back with that two pounder and we'll put a nice little bevel in there. My handle doesn't get too hot. We're just getting a little reef, darn it. Alrighty, let's see what this last section is. Oh, I didn't get enough heat to the last section. Maybe a little more than that, I think. No, maybe not. Just a bit of a banana. It's not going to hurt anything, but because we can, and we'll come back with that final bevel in. Let's see if we can correct that banana just a little bit. Maybe overcorrect it because we still got some beveling to do. Maybe overcorrect it a little bit. So we got some beveling. About like that, I think we'll be all right. Clean up that end. I'll just come back with my two pounder. Just again, I don't want to do a whole lot of grinding on this thing. I don't even. I don't think I'm even going to harden this one. I don't know yet. It probably doesn't need it for for what it's doing. Maybe we'll do a test or something. Let's just try to clean this up a little bit. Bevel. I mean, how we could do a chisel bevel if you wanted to. Now I think about it. Now we want we want that wedge so that it tries to split. A little bit aggressive at the moment. We'll come back and clean it. That's 
chubby as fine as I'm going to get it. Get that straight from the two unbananing to do, but you can see what I started with, and now we're down to about half that thickness. So pretty close to grinding that or thickness. Move down, I'll come down the blade, and then uh, I'll come back to you once I make it to the end, because we still got to go straighten it out. Cleaning this thing up, get the twists, the bananas, and everything I don't want on it. As gone as I can, anyway. Oops, wrong side. So, again, I got a bit of a banana coming off here. Which I don't want. Looks good, and we're very, very close to the edge that I want on it. Uh, I think I am just going to go ahead and harden it now. I won't even bother doing a rough grind because I did that with a hammer. So I don't see any reason why, in my ignorance. You know what I mean? In my ignorance, I don't know why I couldn't just go ahead and harden it. So I'm going to normalize two or three times just so we don't crack and then I'll harden it in the oil and then we'll, uh, I'll just temper it over the forge. I'm not going to put a lot of time into it. I don't want it hard, but I think having a little hardness in there is going to help. Give this thing a little bath in the oil, hopefully not burn the barn down in the process. The oil is really deep. I don't think we really need to worry too much about warping, but maybe. No. So get down in there. into flames on me. Alright, there we go. Let's see what it sounds like and then we'll just temper it down a little. Where am I? Yeah, that's good. I think right there is good. I don't think it's the best hardening because I don't think I had it down deep enough. The oil, like I said, the oil was low in there, but uh, I think we're okay. I like it. Sometimes I sure do wish you guys could talk to me because how's Chandler going to turn this handle into an eye and forge weld together without messing up his hardening. That's stupid. All right, let's put that, let's put that eye in. Oh my God, I'm stupid sometimes. This eye with the grinder, because I'm gonna do a forge weld here at some time and I can't just go over to the table. I got a painted project on the table and I gotta keep the dust to a minimum. It's, it sucks to be in such a small shop. But that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna clean that off. Let's see, which way do we wanna roll it? Let's roll the eye down. What I'm going to do is I'll bring it up to temperature and I'll flux this before I do the bend and hopefully that flux will help keep it as clean as possible. Thing up. Flux the inside, which I decided that was going to be the inside. Just hopefully while I heat it again to bend, it gives me a little protection. I got about a two inch mandrel, maybe two and a quarter over on the side. And we'll go ahead and bring this up for the bend now. Or at least close to what I think the bend's going to be and then nip it off. We can clean it up a little bit more. I'd like to do that, but I don't know if we will. Never done one of these wrapped eyes. We can get this thing wrapped. That was almost too hot there. Where am I going to wrap it? I think about there, I think. Actually, you know, it's a little wider here, but not that much. Maybe I can do the forge weld right there. Maybe. And then just trim that down. 
I like that. I mean, that looks looks okay. Question is, should I forge weld it? No, let's forge weld it. I didn't clean that part though. I'm gonna open this back up and I'm gonna clean it and rebend it. Set the sucker in here. I think that's the plank stand. And we'll open this up just a hair. And we'll hot file this thing. Hopefully the cord well is gonna occur. Hopefully that'll clean it up. And that's what it cords well. I'm putting this top up over it. A little anyway. Let's see what we end up with there. Bring this back down. I like it. We'll go a little tighter. I think we'll be okay. Alright, let's bring it up to temperature. We'll flux it and see what we end up with on a forge weld. Always the optimist. I'm thinking if I do get a good weld in between here, I might be able to just roll those sides down and weld them to the side. Optimist being that I could also just crack open the weld that I was lucky enough to get. But again, this is we're doing it for a reason, right? I have to make this, but there's no reason for us to uh, to not, well, I guess if you're trying to make a living, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta get it done. But in this case, I think uh, it's worth the exercise. See how all the different elements that go into things that we're not perhaps most comfortable with. Like I said, I've never done a wrap die weld. It can't be that crazily different than any other forge welding. Except, I think my steels in this case are, you know, they're, they're contaminated a little bit because they've been heated and hammered. And so, I'm interested to see how it turns out. Bringing it up for forward weight and temperature right now. Guys, I just hope the piece on the top is hot enough. I'm not sure. Here we go. Forward weld. And that's what we got. I don't know. It doesn't look terrible. That's weld number one. I typically do three. So let's just do another one in that range. Clean it up, flex it up again. I don't know if we got a stick or not, but let's hope we did. Flux down in between there, around the nose. And we'll bring it up to temperature again. It's kind of hard to heat that thin little duck bill on top of this heavier piece. I think we got a hot knot. We're gonna find out here in a second. I'm gonna go same spot again. And that's it. I'd say we're welded. I really would. It sure looks like we are. Nice clean little detail in the back here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool so that I can let that weld set and then I'll come back with that weld and I'll gently roll these edges over and maybe we'll just try to do a forge weld on both sides of those. Since we've gone this far, worst that can happen is I can break off that weld and we'll say, oh, that was a dumb idea, Chandler. And uh, then we can uh, pull out the trusty old pig and weld her up. Not so old school. So we'll let it cool. I think, though, I think it's a good weld. It sure does look like one anyway. Happy, happy, happy days. If I don't, if I don't ruin my, my weld, it should be end up with a nice, really strong weld because it's going to wrap around there. But live and learn, right? So I just went quick. I went with the wire brush a lot on it just to try to clean it up. We'll go ahead and uh, heat it up and roll these edges over, flux it up, and see if we can get a weld to stick there. How hot I want to go with it. Hot enough to move, right? So I'm just gonna clean this up quick. I'm gonna flux it on both sides. And then we'll see if we can bend it without breaking open our welds. So, so far so good. Well, I think that looks like my weld stuck because I was hitting it harder than I wanted to, that's for sure. And, yeah. 
Come on, fire. Only a little bit more time. I'm just about ready to leave my fire. You can't do it. Roll this. Again. This side. Fold or fold, I guess it doesn't matter. And I'll tell you, that's a hell of a lot of testing on my 412 right there that I didn't want to do. Yeah, right, we'll run a we'll run a forge welding heat on it. We don't even need to do that, but that'll let us bring it down. Let's see if we can get it to hook up a little bit. We'll uh, fix that. this tool in an auction a hundred years from now. What freaking monkey with a hammer made this? Or they'll find that tool and say a hundred years from now and say this was made 300 years ago. That would be a compliment. At the right temperature, let's give her a go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. the best forge welding I've done. Now, I didn't scarf it, that's why we have that line there. This one didn't have much to, to go anyway. But the fact that we didn't lose this weld is freaking amazing, I think. For a dumb man like me. All right, good job, Chandler. All right, well, now what I'm gonna do is, let's see, uh, hopefully she's a, this person's a right-handed hitter. So I'm gonna put a, a taper on, on this side like you would a, a, like a tomahawk kind of fit so that we can put a taper handle it and I don't worry about fitting in or anything like that. I'm just turn it quick on, on a lathe. I think you'd call it a tomahawk tape rod. Right? Then we got to still harden this again because we were stupid. Hopefully this is enough heat. And again, I'm just gonna basically fuller out this side, thinning it a little bit, but changing it's diameter, obviously. So there's a bit of a taper on there. And I think that should be just fine, actually. Let's get everything straight. Happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Make sure we don't have a crazy little twist in our thing, which probably wouldn't hurt crazily. But I don't want to be crazy. I want to be close to right. Alrighty. So why does it look like there's a twist? There's a twist. Hopefully there isn't. I don't want to mess with it. All right, happy, happy. All right, we're gonna flip around. We're gonna reharden it. That was fun. The damn fire I was winding down because I thought it was done when I did the heat treat. I forgot about the eye. You know that. But we just hardened it and tempered it, and I'm pretty happy with the way it sounds. So we'll go ahead and grind her up, and I gotta make a handle for it. We'll give her a try. See if she works. Quick grind. Went down to about 200 grit. Um, started with a, a, a new, you know, the bevel we put in, and then I stepped that down to a little sharper bevel, and then I just um, convex round that all out so it looks nice and clean. Um, it's sharp, I mean, it's, I don't think it's pick cut paper sharp. We don't want it really sharp, but uh, sharp enough hopefully to, uh, to shave some, some wood if we want to. Uh, cleaned up nice. Now all I need to do is go make a handle for the damn thing. I'll be back. Boys and girls, here you have it. Where is it? Oh, where am I? Down here. All right, let me go up higher. All right, so here you got it. 
the uh, the fro and again I wanted the handle to come off at a 90 degree angle which I'm very pleased I got a lot of meat in here the forge weld on that eye looked really really good uh, I think a twist you know you could easily just put a twist in it and been done or just do a normal vertical uh, handled fro which the blade would be this way on that but uh, I mean I, my handling isn't the greatest but it's will do the trick it's a little unwieldy it's kind of hard on the wrist but it's all right you can handle it like a Japanese style or like this so let me go ahead and uh, get a piece of firewood in here and we'll see if it actually works all right I don't have a whole hell of a lot of big firewood I already split mine pretty small this is the idea right just like that and that way you're not swinging your axe or hatchet Try this little twisty, twisty thing. I can't do it. Gosh, I think it could be about four inches shorter. I'm half tempted to cut it off. It's kind of unwieldy out there, but. Cut your kindling, that's for sure. That's probably why the vertical blade is more popular because it's, it's just a, it's weird against your wrist. But that's the design we went with today. Quite pleased with it. Out of a, I don't know what you call it, a spring harrow or a, um, drag time. Uh, one right angle fro. There you go. That's it. I'm done. It took a few hours to make. But of course, we had to take the long way, right? With this, this thing here. But that forge weld, I'm very, very pleased with that it that worked. This side's even better. Right? You can't see it. This one here, I'd, I'd, again, it wasn't scarfed or anything. It's welded there, but it's just not as clean as it could be. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I will get that that sword finished, I promise. Just when the, and when I, I gotta be in the mental, I gotta be in the sword making mind to be doing that, so I'll catch you on the flip flop. Thanks for your support, guys. If you found this video uh, helpful, educational, maybe even if you just found it entertaining, uh, and you wanna support me, you can jump back to my channel. There's a button on the right hand side of the screen called support. And it's kind of like a tip jar. You can go ahead and leave channel a tip for this video, and that'll help me make some more. I guarantee. Thanks for your support, as always.